So I'm getting ready to start my yellow onion skin dye for wool. And I have my pot really, really full of onion skins. And I put it on the scales. Um, and I used the tear function to take away the weight of the pot. So I have six ounces of onion skins. So I'm going to add distilled water. And I am going to simmer these at very, very low temperature for several hours to extract all of the color I can from these onion skins. So here's our onion skins. They've been simmering in two gallons of distilled water for about three and a half hours. So I've been stirring them occasionally and you can see just on the spoon there that we've got some really good color going on. If I dip the paper towel in, you can see that there's a good bit of color there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the burner and I am going to let this steep and cool overnight. And then when it's completely cool, I will go ahead and strain the liquid um, out from the onion skins. And then the onion skins, now that they're used, will go in the compost. I have an additional stainless steel pot with a colander and a piece of cheesecloth set up because it's time to filter the onion dye now that it has cooled overnight. And this was yellow onions, but the dye looks like a nice rich orange color right now. But I think we'll be very surprised. I don't think that orange is the color that the yarn will end up based on my previous experience. I'm going to let the onion skins sit in the cheesecloth and drip for a little bit to make sure that we get as much of the liquid out of them as possible. And then the onion skins will just go on the compost at this point. There is nothing harmful in this so far because so far all we have is onion skins and distilled water. So there's no copper or alum or anything like that. So the onion skins can safely go in the compost at this point. I'm ready to mort it. My hand spun wool. I have completed the process of the spinning by washing my skeins and then after I washed it in the fine I put them in a bowl of distilled water as essentially the final rinse and to just um, keep wet. If you've already washed skeins and are have them dried and are saving them to dye later, you'll want to pre-wet your skeins before you mort it and dye them. Uh, it's really important to have the, the wool completely wet. Um, if you try to mort it and dye uh, a dry skein of wool, you'll end up with streaks. 
So pre-soaking um, keeps it from being streaky so that you'll get a more even dyeing throughout. Up here sitting in my windowsill, I have my two gallon jars of mordant prepared. In this one, I have my alum and cream of tartar. So I mixed up a 15% by weight of fiber alum and 8% by weight of, far, uh, of weight of fiber of the cream of tartar. The cream of tartar helps to uh, helps the alum to more fully mordant the fiber. It also helps the fiber to remain softer because some of the mordants can be harsh on the wool and the cream of tartar will help to um, ameliorate that to some extent. In the other jar, I have my copper sulfate. And copper sulfate is a little different um, some people just say, oh, well, just put however much copper sulfate you want in there and it'll be depleted after you use it several times. So one of the measurements I found said that one ounce is enough for a pound. Um, I'm only going to be doing a three ounce skein this time. So I put in a half an ounce and I will probably be able to use this mordant a couple of times um, for a couple of, of different skeins before it has been used up. So what I am going to do is I'm going to move my gallon jars down here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sous vide to maintain temperature. Right now the mordant and the wool are at room temperature so I'm going to add those the wool to those jars and then we're going to bring it up to 175 um, in a water bath with the sous vide um, heating the water bath. And we're going to let that set for an hour at the 175 once it gets up to temperature. And then we're going to let it cool down overnight. And then we'll be ready to take it out of the mordant and put it into the dye bath. I have marked each of the skeins so that later after they've gone through the dye bath I will know which skein was in the copper, which one was in the alum, and I also have a control that I'm not going to mordant um, at all other than um, just the fact that onion skins um, are a type of dye that some people say doesn't really need a mordant because of the higher tannins. So I have a little stitch marker. Um, this one has like the brass colored stitch marker. We're going to pull it up and let it drip a minute so we're not adding a lot of extra water to our mordant bath. And then that one is going to go into our jar with the copper. And then I have this one marked with a pink stitch marker, and that's going to be the one that I'm going to put in the alum bath. So I'm going to cover those up, let them come up to temperature, and mordant for an hour after coming up to temperature, and then we'll let them cool down naturally. I'll be pulling them out in the morning and be ready to put them into our onion dye bath. Here are the skeins of yarn in the dye bath and I added a little bit of water to make sure that there was plenty of room for movement and that the yarn 
wasn't going to be too crowded. I will stir this occasionally, but I want to be very careful not to um, over agitate it because um, that can cause felting, particularly as this gets hotter. So just a minimal of stirring to make sure we don't end up with an unevenness. But um, just going to bring it up to a simmer for about an hour at this point. So here's my skeins that have been in the dye bath. They heated for their hour, then cooled overnight, and I'm letting them hang up and drip um, to get some of the excess dye out. It's a little hard to see um, because they're a little bit backlit hanging here in the window, but I have my hook that they're hanging from right here. So we have a really nice, there we go, uh, kind of an orange uh, umber sort of color and we'll get a better picture um, after the rinsing in better light um, to be able to see the the true differences in the colors among the um, different um, pre-mordant treatments it does look like the the drips are fairly clear so the dye bath even though it looks like it still has color in it um, is fairly spent. I don't think I'm going to be able to do any additional dyeing with this dye bath. So my next step when it is mostly done dripping is that I will rinse it and I am going to use distilled water to rinse it because our well water does have a tendency to change colors just a bit. So we're going to try to see what our true colors will end up being um, with the distilled water rinsing. So here we are with our final skeins and the colors that we ended up. So they were rinsed five times in distilled water. The first two were just plain rinses. The second rinse was with a little bit of power scour. And then the next rinse was, had a little bit of vinegar to help um, clear the soap and help return the skeins to a normal pH. And then my final rinse, I used a little bit of the, the unicorn um, cream rinse in the uh, rinse water. So here we have the skein that was pre-mordanted with alum and it seems to be the brightest of the the colors it's a nice um, kind of a goldenrod yellow uh, kind of a nice golden color this will be the skein that was pre-mordanted with the copper sulfate and it has a lot more of a kind of a greenish brown cast to it it's still kind of in that that golden yellow range but they talk about that the copper sulfate does sadden colors and by that mean they mean it's kind of a darker not as bright color and I definitely see that in this and then this is the control this uh, did not use any mordant and it is very nearly the same color as the one with the uh, copper sulfate um, just a tad brighter so using the alum definitely brightened the uh, shade of dye that I ended up with from the onion skins. So my next thing will be that I'm going to go ahead and rinse my control in some of our hard water here and see whether it ends up um, changing the color at all now that this is completely dried. Um, because, you know, that will affect how I might choose to wash a final um, article if it's going to change the color even after the, the dyeing is complete. So that is the colors that I got. 
and I think that they're lovely. It's well worth doing again. As my final part of this onion skin activity, I did rinse the skeins in our hard water after they had uh, dried and did not find any additional color change due to our hard water once they seemed to be finished and color fast, which I have had happen in the past if I used our hard water as the rinse water after dyeing.